so happy that you're here this morning, that you said yes, and I bet you're sorry you said yes. Jody, I'll repeat your words. I'm sorry I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Winifred Lynch, where in heaven's name did the name Winifred come from? <clears throat> in my mother's family, there were six girls, two boys and six girls. And the youngest was Winnie. And they came to America, and Winnie became a nun. Aunt Winnie, Sister Declan. Thank God Mother Gerald never heard that till after profession. <laughs> she would have given you oh, that name. Oh, yes, that's what she said. Mm. Can you imagine me in the classroom? Sister Decky. <laughs> <laughs> well, what name did Mother Gerald give you? Well, my brother, my brother had been killed in the World War, and so I got Simon Peter, because there was a Peter and a Mary Peter, Peter Mary, all the way down. But there were no Simon Peter, and that's what I got, and I carried it with me for many years. Loved it. Well, Sister Simon Peter, <laughs> tell me about your uh, birth I know you... I don't know if I was there. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Well, what stories did your Irish parents share with you? <laughs> well, I was born in Morristown, New Jersey. I'm a Joycey girl. This sounds so hollow. No, we're okay. <clears throat> a little like this. Thanks. Uh -huh. And when I was in the hospital... After I was born, a lady came in, and she had lost her baby. And she went in the nursery, and she picked out the prettiest one and took me away. Oh, oh, yeah. Kidnapped you. She did. And then it was time for my mother to give me a little meal. And <clears throat> when she went in, there was no little baby. And, of course, knowing my mother, she screamed bloody murder. And the nurses, the doctors all came running and running, and they went running around trying to find me. Were you kidnapped when you were a little baby? No, I probably should have been. <laughs> Winnie, uh, you, I thought you were from New York, and you just said you're, you were born in New Jersey. Born in New Jersey, mm -hmm. yes. That's where uh, my mother's, most of them, my sister, my aunts lived. <clears throat> well, they lived in... <coughs> Excuse me. They lived in a place called Nyack on the Hudson. And I don't remember what job my father had, but... Um, what well, didn't uh, uh, your aunt announce when he was coming home from work? Oh, that was the Winnie Hunt next door. She, oh, was, oh. she was no relation. Mm -hmm. And she'd stand on the gate of her house next door to ours, and she'd yell, "Win a shred, Papa's home." <laughs> and your your dad was a chauffeur. I remember you telling me. Yeah, but not in the beginning. He worked in some big factory, mm -hmm. in New Jersey, there. <clears throat> and he um, he was a very wonderful, quiet man. Very quiet. Never opened his mouth. From Ireland also? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. but not the same county, no, County Meath. And your mother was from? County Mayo. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> and have you visited those places? Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, I, the people in Mayo are very friendly. They're on the western coast where the wind blows hard. And the people in Meath are on the other side of the island, and they're very quiet, which is not my habit at all. <laughs> I understand you were a very active child. Very. Tell me the story of the Pussy Willow. <laughs> Please. Well, I, I doubt <laughs> if I'd be here today if I left it in. <laughs> it had started. I was playing clown, and my mother had gotten a Pussy Willow plant, and it had a lot of s stems coming out of the vase, you know, and big fat pussies. So, I always wanted to be a clown. <laughs> In fact, I still want to be a clown. 
So I picked off a big fat pussy willow and put one in this ear and one in that. Well, it was time to go and I got the one out of this ear, but I couldn't get this one out. And I kept poking it going down, down, down. And finally it got stuck. And um, they took me to the doctor and because they thought he had instruments to pull it out, but he couldn't reach it because the more he poked, the further down it went in the canal. So my father said, well, leave it in. We'll sell her to the circus. <laughs> sell you to the circus. <laughs> and of course I believed him. <laughs> well, did, did it grow in your ear? It was growing. The oh, wax, you know, and the ear, uh -oh. the heat. The body heat was making it grow. <laughs> it was in there a week. Did it sprout out? Well, it didn't get that far, <laughs> you know, but it was on its way. <laughs> now, I understand you took out your tonsils all by, by mistake, yourself. By mistake. Mm -hmm. I was planning school. And then my mother called us to save the new mattress to come and have cookie and milk. <clears throat> and I thought one more jump and I'll hit that ceiling. So I put the ruler in my mouth and I hunched down and jumped up real high. And when I came down, the ruler went down in my throat. Well, it wasn't <laughs> going to stay there. So I, <laughs> and what do you know, those funny little red things on the ends of the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> but the hard part was I was starting to bleed. And my sister oldest sister came in the room and she saw the blood and she's screaming and then everybody came running you know and I ran under the there was a table in the corner and had a tablecloth all the way down I thought if I hide here they can't find me I forgot about the trail of blood <laughs> <laughs> and they found you your, your oldest sister's name yeah. was Catherine Elizabeth Elizabeth but we called her Tootsie oh Tootsie and Catherine, and then the boy was Peter. And <laughs> Peter died in World War II yes. in Germany, is that right? Germany, Raymog in Germany. Mm -hmm. During the Battle of the Bulge, I think right. you told me once. Mm -hmm. And 19 years old. Well, it broke my father's heart, and of course my mother too, you know. And he was a, he was a nice guy. You know. He had to be being my parents' child because they tried to raise up nice kids. I don't know what happened to me, but anyway. So I, there was Tootsie I and, and Tootsie Peter. Tootsie and Catherine. And Catherine. And okay. Catherine? Became a nun. Before yeah. you or after? All before. She was seven years older than me. Holier than thou. Than thou. What was her religious name? Martina. And... Um, she was a teacher also, but um, no. Next question. Next question is: Where did you go to school in grade school? We went. There was no Catholic school in Chappaqua, so we rode a bus ten miles to a town called Katona, and they had the St. Mary's School there, and that's where I went from one to eighth grade, and then. Grade school kids off the bus because there were too many high school kids. So I had to go to the public school, Horace Greeley. And um, it was a very avant garde school. All the teachers went to Columbia University in New York and they had the latest methods and this and that and the other thing. And instead of doing um, English grammar, which I never learned, mm -hmm. uh, we were doing flower arranging and Etiquette, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> well, how did you meet up with the Adrian Dominicans? Well, we went to Florida in the wintertime, and, and I went to Rosario and met the wonderful Dominican sisters. And, um, and Did I, you live there or just oh, no, for the no. wintertime? I was a day student, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, there was a little ferry. It, there was Lake Worth, it was Palm Beach Island, Lake Worth, and then West Palm Beach, where the school was. 
and we rode on that little ferry, 10 cents a ride. <laughs> well, that must have been nice to spend your... Oh, it was grand. New York summers in, I mean, winters. Oh, it in was wonderful, in wonderful. Florida. Yeah, yes. No cold for me. Mm -hmm. But what I understand is that once you left West Palm schooling and you graduated from high school, that you went to college. In New York State, we call, call Good Counsel. Today it's renamed Pace University this big university in the city engulfed it up into itself. Did you graduate? Oh, yeah. From here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. did you enter right away, or did you work a no. while? No. Well, um, one year, the Reader's Digest had its headquarters in my hometown, Chappaqua, although they never used that name and the address because people couldn't spell it or pronounce it. So they, they, used, they got all their mail from Pleasantville, <laughs> which was the next town down. <laughs> but um, they had a beautiful um, office building in Chappaqua. And in the, in the wintertime, before Christmas, when they got all the orders for the subscriptions, they hired the uh, girls from the college to help with the, you know, writing them out. and Editing? No, no, it, mm. the forms to take a subscription, oh. that kind of work. And they paid plenty, I tell you. And we had, they had a beautiful um, headquarters, oh, a modern brick building, and the latest of everything. And they were so nice. So you were there a year at Reader's Digest? Well, we worked in the winter, um, I mean, during the school year, mm. in the busy times after school, and then at the end of the, my senior year, they offered me a job. So, so I worked for a whole year there before I entered. And so who did you contact to say, I would, I would like to enter the Adrian Dominicans? I think it was Mother Gerald. Mother Gerald. Mm -hmm. I must have written a letter, because they wouldn't let you in the door if you didn't have <laughs> the right. And agree. <laughs> what did you have? What we we always called a sponsor. Yeah, Ma Marie McGowan helped me get ready. Oh, you know she made the dress, and the black, you know the postulant outfit and all that business. <laughs> and um, it was, I had Sister Edmund <laughs> as a novice. Mistress. Yes, 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 yes. And many times her lips were moving when I was in front of her. Weren't you lucky to be sent right away to Florida? Am, am I right about Very that? Very lucky. Yeah. Because most of them stayed up north. Or Where in Florida were you? Oh, went right to West Palm Beach. And Rosario. Rosario. Mm -hmm. Did you ever teach at St. Anne's? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Greater St. Anne's, we call it. I always had the impression that you knew every name of your first graders, even as you aged. Is that correct? For a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I loved every last one of them. Tell me, tell me this: uh, what happened after you left West Palm? As a religious? Mm -hmm. No, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Well. From what I understand, um, after your father died, wasn't your mother given a special invitation? Yeah, Mother Gerald came down to Florida for visitation. And um, she, um, okay, she, <laughs> I, I'm not hearing myself, but I don't care. Um, she offered my mother a job at Barry to be a house mother. And, of course, my mother loved Florida, so she said yes right away. And then she was near her little Winnie. <laughs> so you would go down to Barry frequently to oh, visit. Well, we had uh, sisters at Rosarian who didn't have their degree, final degrees. And every um, twice a week, they drove to Florida, to Miami to go to college, you know, and make up. And then I'd ride down with them and visit my mother. 
it's always grand. Yeah. What what class do you remember most from, from your teaching years? It have to be primary. Little kids, you know, you can't beat them. This one little boy came up to me one day and he said, now my religious name was Simon Peter, after my brother. And this little kid said to me, sister, when you were a baby, were you a boy or a girl? <laughs> he was looking for some hair. And, and didn't a little girl bring you a earrings? <laughs> we had this cloth wrapped around our heads, you know, as if it made any difference. So what did you do with the earrings? I told her I'd put them on at recess, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> I put them in a box, <laughs> gave them to her mother. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, tell me this. How, how did you get to Adrian? Because I remember you came in the 80s or early 90s to Adrian. What brought you here? I know you were, uh, you came and worked as a, a driver. That was your ministry, which everyone loved you, I remember. But I had no accidents either. <laughs> um, and didn't you have like a dozen or more hats? Oh, I had hats by the ton. In fact, I had a brock as big as the table, full of hats. I loved hats. But somebody stole the box. <laughs> Not at Weber. No, at, in Florida. Oh. Must be some sneaky person walked off of my box of hats. Well, I know you have a, a soft spot for Springbank. Tell me how you came to know Springbank so well. Well, it's a retreat center. And... Uh, Feeling in need of spiritual direction, I went down there. I was going to spend a week, a retreat for a week. And then it enlarged to a month. And then it was six months. <laughs> well, I knew the directors was Trina McCormick that I had in school at St. Rose in Miami. And um, Ursula Ording. Did you ever know Ursula? I did. <laughs> There was no one in the world like Ursa. No what was your nickname for her? I can't remember. Didn't it have something to do with the feet? Yeah. Bigfoot, I think. I Bigfoot. <laughs> she never kept her shoes on. That was, And that bothered the life out of me. Because her shoes were size 12. The feet, right? <laughs> and she smoked. Oh, dear. I'm a foolish nun. <laughs> so I, I think you came uh, to, Weber, to Weber. I mean, I know you were living in Weber when you came to Adrian, but you must have come from Springbank, most likely, after your year I, of retreat. I'm an old lady. I can't remember, I all, remember these, all, all these details. Uh, well, I do know this, and maybe you can elaborate on it, that... Uh, Virginia Hafey Wells um, employed you is probably a good word, isn't it? <laughs> For the renovation. Not exactly. <laughs> she was a hard taskmaster. And believe you me, when she said go, you went fast. <laughs> what, what did you help her with during the renovation time here? Well, I was like a gopher, you know, and I helped her do stuff. Well, you Painting me. and picking out pictures, framing pictures. They sent me to school to Chicago to learn how to frame pictures and mat them, which was a great experience. Um, in fact, the name of the company was Lambert and Jenner, something like that. A famous firm in Chicago. And um, so, most likely, many of the pictures here on campus now, since that renovation was done in the 80s, are pictures that you framed during that time. Right. Well, that's wonderful to know. I bet you miss Virginia. But in the way I did, but in another way, she was like my mother-in-law. <laughs> she was very hard on me. Oh. Now, her, best, her sister was my best friend, Pat Kelly. 
and she was she was in our congregation. Yes, she was. For what, a while. what was? Do you remember what her name was? As a nun, Peter Mary. Peter Mary and Simon Peter. Peter Mary. No wonder the whole the three big three they yeah. called us. That was a a, a hard uh, thing to accept when she died, right? Still was a, yeah, a lot. Well, you talked practically every day, didn't you? Oh yeah. Well, we lived together in in Florida. And she was a great, um, shall I say, motivator. Mm -hmm. She'd get a project, you know. And believe you me, we followed that project from A to Z. Well, didn't you used to drive to her school uh, every September or August to do the bulletin? Oh, I did, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She taught at a Jewish school in White Plains, New York. And I loved that school and those kids. And uh, I worked there, worked on all the bulletin boards and in the classrooms, decorating the tops and the bottoms and the sideboards. And, um, but I enjoyed doing it, you know, it was lots of fun. Well, I, I remember um, Sister Nadine Foley um, entrapping you, is that the word? <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> to do the... Uh, bulletin boards at Siena, is that right? Oh, sure, yeah. She just nuzzled me over there. Wynn, could you just come over and just take a look at that board? <laughs> and we ended up, of course, tearing out the old thing on it and out and getting a whole new board up there. So you had a whole new job. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Winnie, may I ask you, what was it like to move here to Maria? Because you were in Regina. You had uh, an apartment on the second floor in Regina, and I, I, I know Patsy was here to help you, help you move. But how, how is life for you now? Well, no matter where you turn on this campus, you're at home. We, it's just a friendly place, and people are so kind and loving to each other. With the exception of you, I haven't met anyone that I didn't like. <laughs> Winnie, you know you're in the new normal now. You're in your 90s. What, what, what's normal? It's the new normal. That's what they tell me anyway. Oh, the age. The age of 90. So you're 91. One, two, three, 92. And my mother Everybody. My mother was a wonderful. When she was a young girl in Ireland, she won medals for her dancing. Yeah. They have what they call step dancing in Ireland. That's a real art, you know. Well, my shoes are size nine, so I don't have the real art. You know, she worked with Barry as the house mother. And on, they had field day every year, twice a year, I think. And when field day came, my mother would put her shorts on. She'd take pace in all the races, and she'd win them all because the kids were laughing so hard at her. There she goes down the track. <laughs> well, you were good at sports yourself, weren't you? Pretty good, yeah. And what was what was the one you played in uh, high school? Was it? Oh, I love field hockey, and I was the goalie, and that was a hard job, you know, keep the ball out of the net. <laughs> and my mother came to every game, and she'd stand behind the net cheering me on. Get after that one. Watch this one coming down. Be careful now. Here comes somebody. <laughs> uh, how did you take to Vatican II, Winnie? Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much for change. I like things the way they are. And uh, I find change hard. I was the last one out of the long habit. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like my legs covered. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do pretty well now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to adapt if you want to live. <laughs> well, if, if if Janet Capone was sitting here right now, what would you say to her? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> no, what would you want to say to her? Oh, she's a good friend. 
New Yorkers stick together. And of course, I knew her as a girl at Rosarian, and then and then she had her. She's a marvelous woman, I tell you. We're so lucky to have her as our leader. And uh, she's down in Florida now. Yeah, uh, Punta Gorda. Gorda. You know where, right where that is. I yeah, think. it's mm -hmm. near. Um, it's above um, Fort Myers. Yeah. Uh, well, I, oh, I like Rosario, you know, the boarding school. And even though they, we had to be up late at night, making sure they were in their beds and not up on the roof. Many times we'd find them up there. When you were a, a young nun, did, was there any sister that was like a mentor or an inspiration to you in your religious life or life as a teacher? Oh, yeah, many of them were. Uh, especially Sister Carmelia. Oh, I just thought she was the the beginning and the end. Did you live with her? Oh, yes. Where? She was my principal at St. Anne's, Westbound. And she was so enthusiastic and full of life. And she had a vocabulary from here to, to West Palm Beach. You know, it was a, just a special lady. And you'd think, you know, that she was sleeping when she would be having um, a lecture or something. <laughs> but she knew every word that person was saying. You know, she just, yeah. And she made me do the craziest things, you know. One day there were these two boys, and they were acting up. And the teacher sent them to Carmelia, who was principal. And... Uh, she said, now what's wrong with you two? She said, of course, they start to laugh. They were about seventh grade, I think, you know. So the more she asked, the more they laughed. <laughs> the boys will do. <laughs> so finally, she called me off. And she said, go over to church and bring me the holy water fountain. I said, what? Bring the holy water fountain. Said, well, it happened to have a stand. And in the stand, there was... A, glass bowl full of holy water. So very, I, I was taught to be obedient, so I brought the um, holy water bowl over and handed it to her. <laughs> and she stood up. She doused the kid, the two of them, with the holy water. Let that be a lesson to you, to behave yourself in school. <laughs> wasn't a kinder woman in the world than Carmelia. And absolutely the smartest lady I ever lived with. Just boundless energy and knowledge. And she was so human and so funny. And you have to have a lot of humor in life. We never use the word Republican in my presence. You know, one time I was from a little town in New York State called Chappaqua. And there weren't many people living in Chappaqua. And they were all Republicans, <laughs> the ones that lived there. And we had this Pat Barry, who was a cousin of Brother Gerald's, by the way. And we went down one time. The first time I voted to the firehouse in our town. And there was Pat Barry standing in a here come the lynches, the only Democrats in Chappaqua. <laughs> and my mother says, watch up, Pat. <laughs> oh, he was a grand guy, though. Really funny. Oh, John Kennedy, who else? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> there was nobody like that fair-haired boy. What about the popes? What? Does any oh I, yes, it. John the Twenty Second. I love that little guy. I think he was wonderful. Open up the windows and brought in the fresh air and and when he, and change. <laughs> no, I didn't do too well with change. <laughs> I was what they called a late adapter. Very late. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm a very lucky woman. Oh, I do that. 
Jody, you're super lady. And uh, I think um, it was a Lou Gehrig that said one time, I'm the luckiest man alive. Well, I'm not a man, but I'm luckiest woman alive, you know, to be here among such wonderful women and, and people who work with us. And um, we have everything. As the lady from Kerry would say, we have everything and everything. <laughs> One last thing, Winnie. Um, if a stranger were to walk up to you and say, I know you've lived a long and fruitful and beautiful life, what words of wisdom would you have for me and how to live life? Say your prayers every day. Read the, read the Bible. Be kind to your fellow man. There's a duck, maybe somebody's mother. Amen. <laughs> Be kind to, to your flat footed friend. friend. Or the, the duck, duck maybe somebody's mother. mother. <laughs>